National pride, a conviction that one's own country is unique to all nations. History has witnessed nations clashing in devastating conflicts to assert their supremacy. As the 21st century dawns, the nature of these conflicts transformed. Once defined by the trenches of physical warfare, these battles have been commercialized in the digital age through online gaming. The survival game Rust has emerged as a perfect arena for this entertainment, broadcast live through Twitch rivals, captivating millions of viewers around the globe. As old rivalries reignite, Team Spain, driven by fierce competition and a history filled with controversy, finds itself under fire due to recent death threats and racial remarks made by viewers, with Spanish creators being banned from Rust and Twitch rivals over what they claim to be cultural misunderstandings. This surprising development has left viewers and creators around the world in shock, wondering how something so promising could lead to this disaster. In 2020, the world looked to be a scary place. Isolated and quarantined at home left many uncertain of what the future would hold. Amidst the fear, a silver lining emerged, the explosive growth of online entertainment. Games like Rust, requiring hours of dedication, saw a surge in player numbers as the world found itself frozen in time. This uptick wasn't limited to gaming alone. Platforms like Twitch and YouTube also witnessed a soaring viewership. Every content creator was loving this surge in popularity, specifically the cast from offline TV and friends, holding celebrity names like Disguise Toast, Hokey Mane, and Carl Jacobs. Babo Ape, their talent coordinator and an avid Rust player, saw untapped potential. Why not bring OTV and friends to a Rust server to create content? Face Punch Studios, who recently collaborated with Rustoria and HTune, was already enjoying their success with their Trust in Rust charity event, and with the new introduction of Twitch Drops, eagerly embraced the idea. So everyone came together to create OTV's first Rust server, and it was a massive success. We're talking record-breaking sales, Twitch and YouTube are now hitting peak viewership, all in favor for Rust. Meanwhile in Spain, content creators Rubius and AlexB11 are facing the challenge of language barriers in these English-centered events, and had an idea of their own. Launching Egoland, in 2021, a similar event tailored for the Spanish-speaking community, gathering 70 of the top influencers from various games, they mirrored the success of offline TV. This event marked a historic moment for Rust, as it welcomed an unprecedented influx of non-English-speaking players exposing Rust to a staggering 275 million Spanish viewers on YouTube, giving tractions to servers like Rust Spain, who once had very limited popularity, now became a hotspot for this upcoming Spanish community. As these events ran their course, Face Punch, Twitch, and Rustoria were very happy with their outcomes. While opinions among Rust players varied, with some controversies and bans occurring, many still wish to see more of these events in the future. So in a groundbreaking move, Disguised Toast representing OTV and AlexB11 from Egoland decided to merge their communities together for a competitive event in August of 2022. This would become known as Twitch Rivals Rust Game Battle, featuring a substantial prize pool of $100,000. This event promised to unite the biggest online celebrities from both the Spanish and English-speaking communities to battle it out in an entertaining three-day tournament. The premise was simple, the team to collect the most dog tags through challenges, PvP, and raiding would win, but to the surprise of many, would also put forward a controversy never seen to this scale for a gaming competition, due to cultural, customary, and personality differences between Spanish and English speakers. Previously overshadowed by mutual respect, now became glaringly apparent. The controversy began with the Spanish team strategy, adhering to the rule that bases couldn't be raided in the first 24 hours, and with this rule, they chose to leave their base as Twig, which is very easy to destroy. This decision led to an unexpected turn when Coconut B and Mendo from the English team managed to infiltrate their base. During this process, many Twig layers were destroyed as they exited the base while killing the Spanish team. This incident sparked heated debates among viewers and creators from both sides. The English-speaking community accused Team Spain of exploiting a technicality and displaying poor sportsmanship. Conversely, the Spanish team argued they were playing within the rules, viewing the English team's actions as rule-breaking. This controversy might have looked unreasonable, but with a $100,000 prize pool on the line, both teams were very serious about winning. As the event progressed, additional rules were quickly put forward to prevent such exploits, but both teams found ways to bend these new guidelines, leaving Twitch rival staff to intervene and mitigate the drama. This dispute escalated into what many would call the Rust racism controversy. 
where Recoy, a key player on the Spanish team, felt disrespected after the earlier events and would write, Are you guys re which prompted a negative response from the English-speaking team. In the US, many would consider the R-word to be derogatory, which is where the N-word came into play, and not the N-word you might be expecting. The Spanish team started using Enya, a native character to their language, which caused more backlash. The Spanish creators explained that Enya was a harmless character in their language, as it's used in English as NY, which is said in Canyon, or even Jalapeno. It's uncertain if the Spanish creators were aware of the controversy of this character initially, but decided to keep using it anyways. This was followed by outright racism by some viewers in the chats of Canadian streamers Disguised Toast and Coconut B. But before we continue, ad time. Maybe you had a bad day. It's okay to be sad sometimes, so you lie down in your bed and realize some YouTube might make you feel better. Throat goats, today's video is about- Shut up! Well, just put in your headphones. It's not possible. Don't forget, you have Raycon earbuds. Optimized gel tips to fit perfectly in your ear. Very affordable compared to many items on the market. Eight hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life. Comes in a variety of colors. Noise isolation? Say no more. Enjoy a great night's rest with Raycon. Dang, you must ask yourself, did I do enough? Stay hard. Raycon earbuds have been awesome for my gym workouts, and I highly recommend you guys check them out. Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash jackshepard to get 15% off your Raycon purchase, plus free shipping. Add over, back to the video. They're sending me pictures of dogs saying your next meal. It is not known if you are a gringo, Chinese or Korean, you don't even have a garbage identity. As the English team began to hold a massive gap of points over the Spanish team, Coconut B predicted that the Spanish team, under the weight of these circumstances, would likely withdraw from the event. His prediction came true, as the Spanish team exited early, before the final day, handing an automatic victory to the English-speaking team. In the aftermath, Alex B11 and Disguised Toast parted on good terms, despite the outcome not being as ideal as they hoped. However, the event was a resounding success in terms of viewership and monetization, benefiting all involved. But many were not quick to back down on their views, such as Spanish players like Rakoi, who became very vocal in trolling creators like Coconut B, which puts forward the question, if such an event on a large scale is beneficial for viewership and monetization, what then is the real issue between Spanish and English creators? Well, it set a bad precedence, as both teams had provocators escalating the drama. With a divide of a language barrier, viewers were isolated to a single perspective based on their language, regardless of who might have actually been correct. American, European, Australian, and New Zealander viewers typically sided with English-speaking streamers, while Spanish-speaking countries like Argentina, Spain, Mexico, and Colombia supported the Spanish streamers. This division allowed for narratives to be controlled by each side, potentially escalating tensions further with viewer retaliation. In light of this, Twitch Rivals Game Battle 2 was organized in August of 2022. Alex B11 chose not to return, and in his place, Greg F, a Call of Duty streamer from Spain, stepped up as a leader but was eliminated early on Day 3, which led to Disguised Toast Team winning by Day 5. A lot more participants were happy, except a new issue arose when Coconut B suspected Excury, a Spain streamer to be stream sniping him to have an advantage during his raid. This was put to an investigation by the Face Punch developer Alistar for the suspicions to be proved false. Coconut B would issue an apology. However, this wouldn't be the last time such a misunderstanding would occur. Twitch Rivals Game Battle 3 would take place on May of 2023, where Coconut B's team managed to have an impressive win in the last 30 minutes of the event and stealing the tags needed from the Spanish team, being run by Panpots, a Spain content creator. This was one of the most emotional moments witnessed in Rust history, which I had the opportunity to explore in depth in my last Twitch Rivals documentary. However, this loss for the Spanish team was devastating, as they were moments away from winning the event, more specifically for M2CG, who made the chances for Coconut B to win possible. Despite the agonizing defeat, he was respectful in taking the loss and showed good sportsmanship. The Spanish players showed they genuinely cared about winning the tournament, above all else. 
Finally, Twitch Rivals Rust Game Battle 4 was broadcasted in December of 2023. The Spanish teams, with a history of disqualifications, eliminations, and never ranking above 4th place, were now very eager to win this event. The competition featured 10 teams, including two Spanish teams led by MTV Al Capone, a Mexican streamer, and Panpots, a previous team captain. As the event kicked off, anticipation was high, but doubts about Team Spain were still present, especially from Coconut B, who raised concerns about 144 Rust, a Yugure streamer previously banned from the game who almost participated. But beyond this concern, things were looking good. Team Al Capone was dominating the scoreboard for most of the event, and it looked like Team Spain may win this tournament. But on the other side of the field, Team Panpots was facing some controversy. On December 14th, of one day until the end of the event, Xguri from Team Panpots was caught live on stream, exploiting a teleportation glitch, sparking outrage among other teams and organizers. But that wasn't all. An attack on Team Mendo's base by Team Panpots led to a heated altercation. Like, what did I do to deserve people like being racist towards me when all I'm doing is farming? I've been playing this game for three days and I've held a gun. Like, I've never even like used a gun basically. Like, how is that, like, how is that even fair? Members of Team Panpots ran into Rainosaurus, a Chinese-American VTuber, and were overheard using the phrase Madala China and Chino Farmer during the clash. While these phrases are not commonly considered derogatory in Spanish, the English translations of Kill the Chinese Girl and Chinese Farmer were subsequently reported as racist harassment. Observed by Twitch's Spanish staff, triggered an investigation into Team Panpots. The Spanish players defended their language as cultural misunderstanding, but given Twitch rivals' previous run-in with viewer man. harassment against Asian players, they did not want the situation to escalate. In a first for Twitch rivals, organizers decided to ban Xguri and M2CG, which at that point, Team Panpots decided to withdraw from the event. Coconut Bee's reaction to this ban led to backlash from the Spanish players. <laughs> including more harassment from both sides. Xguri, visibly upset, streamed his reaction, seeking resolution but to no avail from Face Punch or Twitch. Rakoi, also playing on Team Panpots, retaliated by leaking the server IP, leading to a denial of service attack, resulting in his Twitch ban. The following day, Team Al Capone was eliminated by Coconut Bee and other groups in an allied raid, a move they felt specifically targeted them because they were Spanish-speaking. The event ended when Coconut Bee lost the winning amount of tags to Hjun, who deposited them for Team Blueprint, making them the winning team. In similar Twitch Rivals fashion, Many assumed the drama would end there. It did not. Team Panpots expressed their frustrations publicly, and Coconut Bee continued his trolling, leading to death threats against him by the viewers. In a surprising turn, Volcano, a Spain creator from Team Al Capone, accepted a boxing match from Coconut Bee, set for February of 2024, which has been a popular way for creators to settle their disputes, such as KSI vs. Logan Paul's first boxing match. So, as a viewer, do you think the fault lies on a specific side? Or do you think this is a matter of cultural differences gone wrong in the heat of competition? Supporters of Spanish-speaking teams would likely explain that English creators set a narrative and targeted the Spanish community as a whole, instead of calling out a specific bad actor, which is why they may have responded the way they did. With the language and cultural differences being an ongoing theme, they held strong on their view it was a misunderstanding rather than a direct attack on English speakers. So to what extent should participants be allowed to banter without implications and repercussions? For terms or behaviors, while not explicitly racist, derogatory, or offensive in their native language, could be considered as such in another language or culture. For supporters of the English-speaking team, would probably express their concern for escalation, where it would be fair to say Coconut B was escalating drama in his responses to the Spanish teams, more specifically for this event against Rakoi and Panpots. However, for their responses in return, for many could be seen as taking it too far. To what extent are streamers responsible when members of their viewer base resort to death threats and targeted harassment? Rakoi's actions, which include instigating hate raids and urging his audience to falsely report Coconut B's stream, the absence of disapproval, from other Spanish-speaking streamers regarding their viewers' behavior has led to a disturbing wave of harassment and death threats targeting numerous English-speaking content creators. Peace is not the absence of conflict. 
it is the ability to handle conflict by peaceful means. Twitch Rivals Rust Game Battle 5 will certainly have English and Spanish speakers. As we've seen, there clearly isn't a simple solution or an answer that everyone will be happy with, making this a very difficult topic to present. Still, there is a hope. A hope that one day, these vibrant communities, enriched by their unique cultures and perspectives, can recognize they have already found a common ground in plain rust. It's a journey not just of compromise, but of understanding, empathy, and a shared passion for this game, which we have devoted so much of our lives to. Hey you, thanks for watching. Check this video out next if you enjoyed this video, and please make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.